live Skyfox over this pursuit that is underway in Los Angeles. This is West Boulevard and Hyde Park Boulevard. We've seen this very dangerous pursuit. LAPD is the lead agency at this point. Here's what we know about that driver down below. This started in Hawthorne, uh, a call for a robbery suspect somewhere along the way in the first portion of this pursuit. That driver got out of that first vehicle. That robbery suspect ditched that first car and then stole this car. So a lot of laws broken here already. So this is a stolen vehicle uh, now and a robbery suspect inside driving at speeds that are way too fast for residential uh, residential streets in the Har Hyde Park area. So we just made that hard left turn there, weaving in and out of these really, really jam-packed streets. Streets. Very, very dangerous. So take a look as we are following this pursuit. Speeds now 40, 50 miles per hour, blazing through. Uh, again, this is Hyde Park started. We picked this up in Hawthorne, a stolen vehicle down below with a robbery suspect inside. You talk about how in the world do you bring these things to an end. This driver could be stopped by spike strips. We've seen that, but in these tight, narrow streets, that could be hard to do for law enforcement. They also resort to the pit maneuver, but when speeds are this fast, you cannot engage a driver with a pit maneuver. Speeds need to be below 35 miles per hour. So here we are, West 58th Place and Vernon Avenue in Hyde Park. We bring this to you as a public service. If you know anybody in this area, please make them aware because this is extremely dangerous with these excessive speeds on residential streets. Uh, at 6.04, just after 6 o'clock in the afternoon, in the afternoon on this uh, Wednesday. Obviously, people will be coming home from work. People are already home from work. Uh, it is summertime for kids, so there could be some kids out there in the streets. Very, very dangerous. And this is most definitely a residential neighborhood. So again, a very dangerous situation down below. West 58th Place and Buckler Avenue in Hyde Park. So we have a lot of different elements, moving parts, if you will, to this pursuit. Oh gosh, just coming up on that intersection and that unsuspecting driver trying to make a right turn doesn't expect to have a, a su robbery suspect being chased by police come up on them. You see there, for the first time we're seeing uh, law enforcement now and now, now the speeds are really picking up. We got our eyes on a couple of black and whites there. Uh, so speeds 55, 60 miles per hour in the View Park area. Uh, this is over Hill Drive and West 64th Street. I'm looking with you along um, the uh, the extreme nav technology. Now we're officially in Inglewood. So we're making that sharp right turn. You wonder if this uh, suspect knows where they're going. I mentioned LAPD. I want to make clear that I've just been corrected. This is Hawthorne PD. That is the lead agency because that is where this all began. This latest pursuit. We're seeing the black and whites come up on this suspect uh, in this intersection. Uh, when, when we cover these pursuits, We've seen it happen before where suspects like to go where, where they are familiar with the neighborhood. That makes a lot of sense. We don't know, considering this started in Hawthorne, not too far away from Inglewood. So maybe they are trying to get somewhere where they know. A lot of times they're on the phone. Uh, it looks like there's some damage to the uh, right side uh, passenger door there, perhaps, from my vantage point anyway. Uh, I think you might be seeing that with me along, if you're watching from home, uh, blowing through that stop sign. Of course, uh, plenty of other drivers out there not knowing, but they may be seeing the, uh, the, the flashing lights coming up behind them. If you, oh gosh. Going against traffic, this is when it gets really, really dangerous. Making a right turn, there's that other driver who had to you slow down quickly, slam on their brakes so that they didn't hit this person. Uh, if, if you ever find yourself in a situation, it's really hard to act um, quickly, uh, but, but if you get a chance to, you do not want to play cat and mouse, of course, with one of these suspects because you could end up getting hurt or impeding on law enforcement's ability to bring this to an end. You do want to get over to the right if you can. That's what law enforcement officers tell us. We're going on an on-ramp here. It looks like we are, and it looked like we just saw a helicopter, a law enforcement helicopter fly below our Sky Fox there as well. So now we're on the overpass here, Ladera Heights, West Slauson Avenue. 
that SUV following behind. Uh, the SUV uh, could very well do a pit maneuver if speeds are below 35 miles per hour. There we go over the median on the other side of the street there, doing all that they can, desperate driving skills to stay away, stay out of those handcuffs. So now we're seeing the other side. This one does not look damaged on this side. It looks like a sports car. Uh, I'm not sure the make and model. Um, trying to get that information. It is a Kia, which, by the way, as we know, is, uh, as we have reported anyway, is the most popularly stolen vehicle out there. Christine Devine is joining me now for this coverage of this robbery suspect pursuit. Not sure if you heard, Christine, but this this is the second vehicle that is involved in this pursuit. Okay. So it started with a robbery suspect in Hawthorne who then ditched the first vehicle, then stole this vehicle below, the Kia below. And Got so it. now we have a, a stolen vehicle involved as well. My question, did you see how the Kia was stolen? And you're right, we have covered a number of stories of Kias being stolen. Do we know if somebody was carjacked or they broke into the car? Don't have that information just yet. Well, here we go. Rush hour, Southern California. Yet another pursuit. Marla, you've been covering this since you started your show at 6 p.m., give or take. Uh, we are in the Fox Hills area. I I'm looking at the street there, fairly wide open at this hour, where you can think of a lot of streets at this point in time as being very congested. But look at the wide open road there uh, that this suspect has to just go, you know, full on in this pursuit. Just getting word, when we saw that helicopter fly below Sky Fox, I mentioned it was a law enforcement helicopter. It was, in fact, LA County Sheriff's Department is now involved. So multiple agencies involved. Hawthorne PD is the lead agency. The vehicle that was stolen down below uh, with a robbery suspect inside is a Kia. It looks to be extremely dark tinted windows. Maybe it's just this angle, but it, from this vantage point anyway, it looks Looks like those window, those windows, uh, driver and passenger are tinted and look like blowing through a light there because you saw a car stopped at that light one after the other. Uh, joining us by phone is Kevin Takumi, a Fox 11 uh, colleague here. Kevin, you've uh, brought us a lot of information on a number of pursuits. What do you make of this one here? Yeah, this one's been going for a while, and it, like you said, it all started with Hawthorne PD was in pursuit of who is now the passenger in this vehicle. That suspect, uh, that suspect ended the pursuit, went on foot in the area of Marina del Rey, and then got into another vehicle, this one you see here, as the passenger, and then the car took off. The sheriffs picked up the pursuit, went all the way into downtown LA, very high speed, blowing through stop signs, stop lights, all throughout the way. At one point, almost hit a bus head on, and you can see now making another turn here. We're in the Culver City area, going northbound, now on, um, going north on Sepulveda, and it's been going on for a while. The sheriffs now have backed off. They've gone into tracking mode. They've cut a couple of times they re-engaged it and then backed off again. The um, sheriff's airship has been over it the entire time here as it was kind of zigzagging through neighborhoods through Hyde Park area and also um, in the South LA area. But now on Culver Boulevard here going, looks to be like north and which will eventually turn westbound here. Um, but very high speed, a lot of near collisions throughout mm -hmm. this pursuit. You can see going across some other ones there. And then also in the head on into traffic going across lanes. But all these streets now, we're in the middle of rush hour. All of these streets very packed. You can see there's a lot of traffic in the opposite direction. But as you get farther and farther down the line here, you will get into a lot of them. A lot of now going on the wrong side of the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sheriffs have backed off oh, of this wow. because it has gotten. There are a couple of close calls there. So traffic is getting worse now. He's turning on to look, going into a residential neighborhood. Oh, gosh. Okay. So we'll see where this goes. Yep. But it has been nonstop. Um, like I said, the sheriff's backed off of it. They had a couple of close calls. People coming through intersection, you can see the sheriff's just staying right on top of this. We're still kind of in the area, kind of the borderline 
of, uh, of LAPD and Culver City's jurisdiction here. Hey, so we'll see if they engage into it or stay or let the sheriffs handle this. So, Kevin, right when we had you on, we had, Christine and I had eyes, now this driver's making a U-turn, maybe it's a dead end there. This is Revere, or I can't keep up because he's yeah, making right. lefts and rights mm -hmm. um, in the, the Culver City area. Um, speed's picking up quickly, tight, tight streets again. I hate to see this. Um, there were those black and whites um, when you joined us. So now are you saying that those have also backed off as well? Well, they've kind of backed off and they're in the area. The airship is is staying with this. The sheriff stayed on this for oh, gosh. a, oh, oh, you can see a little bit of bump in there. Yep. The, the sheriff stayed on this uh, a very long time as far as sheriff pursuits go. Mm -hmm. um, and you see a lot of traffic here. Yeah, we're getting on to uh, Duquesne here in Culver City, and these this is a very Ooh. this is one street that a lot of people use as a Wrong way. you know a shortcut through Ooh. the area and very tight and a lot of traffic. Kevin, we're we're just watching that driver go in the wrong lanes yet again. Now you're saying the original want was on the passenger in this car, so we know there are two people in the car, right? Right. It was initially the pursuit act started with Hawthorne Police Department. They were in pursuit of uh, a suspect. That suspect eventually uh, got out of the car and ran, then got into this car as the passenger, and then this car took off. So two in the vehicle, at least two in the vehicle at this point, the driver and the passenger that was in the original pursuit with Hawthorne Police Department. The sheriffs picked it up out of Marina Del Rey, chased it all the way into downtown Los Angeles, went through South L.A., and now we're into Culver City here. You can see how much traffic there oh, is. Oh, and yeah. still going on the wrong side of the road oh, here is Jefferson. Gosh. Going to come back out to oh. kind of a lot of head-on traffic. And Jefferson really backed up here as it gets sort of closer to the Baldwin Hills area as it's moving towards La Cienega. So, Kevin, I, I'm trying to connect the dots. So the original suspect is now the passenger in this vehicle so in other words this vehicle Correct. the driver is known to the suspect yeah. so like a getaway driver yeah correct oh, you can see the sheriff's car once again catching yep. up and re-engaging his pursuit okay we're kind of been in an industrial area kind of now we're getting into the crenshaw area lapd's crenshaw but those look like still to be sheriff's units the initial sheriff's units that were pursuing this vehicle so Kevin. Very tight turns here, yeah. a lot of in this residential area, now going through an alleyway here. So so not a stolen vehicle per se that we know of. Right. This is, as you said, Marla, a, a quote, getaway driver. Uh, this person taking a lot of risks to get away from law enforcement, going in the wrong direction many times. Very scary coming up upon other cars, squeezing in between cars. Um, this person really wants to get away with this passenger who's a suspect in another situation, a robbery suspect. There's at least three black and whites there. At one point, they were looking at the pit maneuver. They got very close a couple of times, mm -hmm. but the speeds were just way too fast. They were up in the 50 mile an hour range. They got very close up to this bumper, but now we're up in the Blair Hills here, and you can see a lot less traffic. But you can definitely see that you, you, this is going to wind its way through the uh, kind of the, the North Culver City area. Now it's going in circles. So we're going to see if deputies are going to be able to, uh, at the back, kind of coordinate and, and at block the exit of it, try to hit it with before. some stop sticks. Yeah. Um, and as we look at this vehicle, at one of the moments that we zoomed in, it almost looked like this vehicle was, oh, here we go, foot bail, foot bail, no foot bail. Just trying to figure out. Oh, there's no outlet. So we see oh, the no, no outlet. Okay. So this is going to be interesting. It looked like there was paper plates on this vehicle as well. But to your point, Christine, this isn't necessarily a stolen vehicle. Uh, now they're going to figure out, Kev, uh, Kevin and Christine, where to go because, look, you're at a dead, dead end. end. Well, that's how this one might end. Uh, but they've been taking uh, moves that are very dangerous to get away, wondering if they will try to reverse it into law enforcement. Look at the We've windshield wipers going. Yeah. Uh, a lot going on there. All right, so now you got at least two people in that car there. Uh, how long do they sit it out? Law enforcement there, I'm sure, probably with their guns drawn, yelling commands. Uh, Kevin, who knows how this one's going to end? Yeah, at this point, it's going to be a waiting game. See if they can get them to come out of the car. Um, like you said, at least two people in the car, the driver and the passenger. The passenger was the initial suspect in the first pursuit with Hawthorne Police Department. But now up here, 
in a small residential area. They've got it blocked off. There's no way that car is going to get out. Um, they would have to they would have to crash the gate. But you can see yeah, there is gated. no other way down the hill. Yeah, we've seen these standoffs last for hours on end. Uh, let's hope that that's not the case. But yeah, that's interesting that the windshield wipers are going. I'm sure it's chaotic inside. And it certainly does look like there is that side damage to this vehicle. It's hard to get a look at what's going on. You see some movement in there with the shadows and the sunlight. Obviously, oh, I just it looked like they were kind of hunched over, maybe putting something under the seat or trying to make a plan. Um, Kevin, this is really scary for, I mean, this is what officers trained for a moment like this, where they always assume that the suspects are armed uh, and they have to assume that for their own safety. Well, there must be definitely something with these suspects mm -hmm. because Sheriff's Department have continued on this pursuit for at least 45 minutes here. And, you know, usually we see Sheriff's Department uh, watch commander for one reason or another will call off the pursuit, but the Sheriff's Department stuck with this all the way till it hit this dead end here. So there is something with with this initial suspect that they really want him in custody. Well, word is a robbery suspect on the streets near downtown LA. What kind of robbery and where? That might give us some good answers here. Uh, as you talked about this vehicle coming to pick up the other driver, the, the, the original mm -hmm. uh, person in that robbery case. Uh, you know, we've talked about really crazy robbery stories here in Southern California in recent times. Uh, the follow-home robberies, uh, the home invasions, the, the thefts of our businesses, and, and who knows what kind of suspect or suspects we're dealing with here, Kevin, and you note that when you say how law enforcement stayed on the pursuit of this car. Yeah, you can definitely see, I mean, there, you can see movement on the driver's side. On the passenger side, they might have jumped into the back seat at this oh, wow. point. It looks like the driver might too, but you can see mm -hmm. sheriff's deputies have this entirely blocked off there. I don't see any less than lethal out right now with that shot that we just had. So, yeah, it looks like, looks like they're one person's in the back seat the passenger seat is empty so they might have gotten back there so yeah we're getting a um, look at, at driver the driver there, there. yeah mm -hmm. putting something in the center console look like uh, oh window down the window down, down making contact i mean where can these suspects go even if they attempted to make a foot run for oh, here we go. Look, look at the okay. officer to they're going to throw uh, some spike. stop sticks out there yeah. just Spikes to make sure that them. they can't reverse into law enforcement this doesn't go anywhere uh-huh yeah he's okay. saying he's showing him his he's there with hands up Al. hands yep oh and there is somebody you can see there is somebody in the back seat yeah so. drop the keys out what's he showing yeah, there still not really, he's got his hands up yeah, but he's still not really keys. complying there Looks like the key. They're probably saying, drop the key so the car's going nowhere. Got that spike strip right there. Can't back into law enforcement very well. And, and you wonder, What's he saying? well, there's damage to the, the, on the other side, you know, why he's just not physically getting out of the car at this point. Is the door jammed? I doubt that. Uh, but it seems interesting that he's saying, here I am, here's my hands, here are the keys. Let's bring in Jim Hemmel from the uh, L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Retired Jimmy, been with us a lot lately. Uh, as you see, this suspect definitely gesturing to law enforcement. Looks like a key in the hand there, but not dropping that key. What do you make of the suspect's demeanor? Looks like he's crying. Yeah, he does look uh, agitated, go. and it's important to keep in mind that law enforcement wants to control uh, how this apprehension concludes rather than having the suspect control when he comes out he or she comes out um, we don't know uh, what type of weapon if any is inside so as, a, as you can see now they're uh, putting out spike strips to prevent any sort of ramming incident where there's um, unintentional consequences if, if you were to ram the vehicle so we want to take uh, precautions in law enforcement to try to mitigate any harm but you see a lot of movement from another person in the back of the vehicle, and then this presents a danger as well. You don't oh, know if they're Oh, it's a baby. Oh, no, Jim, it's a baby. So there's somebody in the back seat who just gave the driver a little baby, and he's kissing the baby because he knows that he's going to go into custody. Or she. Or yes. Is it a she? Hey, there, there, was some, there was some radio traffic. There was possibly a baby in the car, so that came out 
uh, after it came to a stop here. So uh, it looks like that, from this visual, that's been confirmed. So, you know, they're going to have to play this a little bit differently, how they're going to do this here, yeah. oh, how they're going to bring this it to an end. It is true, and, and it would be interesting to know at dispatch, it's, uh, oftentimes we're not aware, uh, watching from a uh, distance, what the dispatch might oh. know if there's a, a, a child inside the vehicle. So you that that can be why the vehicle wasn't a uh, pit maneuver or things of that uh -huh. nature for the safety of the child. So all of those considerations have oh, to be gosh. taken. Well, it sounds like the person was trying to negotiate with law enforcement and let them know uh, we have a child in the car mm -hmm. or, or and law enforcement dealing with a, a, a the person in the past in the back seat who was the original suspect in the robbery case so a lot going on there Jim for law enforcement to decipher and to end this peacefully so true and it's it sort of epitomizes what law enforcement has to go through as far as navigating what you see it's also why it's so important to keep your demeanor calm uh, there's a tendency to get agitated uh, because you're at high speeds, maybe there was a violent robbery. We don't know the nature of it. Uh, but but at the same token, you have to keep your demeanor because unexpected things such as this that could endanger the life of a child and other things could come into play. It looks like there's an embrace happening inside the car between the driver and the person that's in the back seat um, who presumably now has the child. As it appears, the driver will get up, Jim, and turn himself in he's obviously distraught you make a great point though jim you've done this you did this for your profession um you're in consulting now everything that you have to deal with when you're dealing with a situation like this where it's just a robbery suspect and then there's this another car involved and then you never know and now a baby um it's uh it's and now we're seeing the, oh, the woman in the back woman clearly in the back. yeah with the baby well, it does look like there's. it would be difficult for the vehicle to move, and I think it's going to be a safe conclusion, which is uh, the most important factor, and we can sort of decipher now um, ne next steps. Wow. You know, there's always a story behind that that's unfortunate. Uh, of course, we want to look out for the victims, but there's always troubling uh, details when uh, that involve human beings when you're involved in crime and, and things of this nature. So um, I'm glad to see this great restraint by law enforcement authorities. So we have this driver here, this suspect backing up and clearly giving up. It was almost heartbreaking to see, uh, looks like a, perhaps a family or people who certainly care about each other uh, caught up in this. Uh, I'm, I'm Kevin Takumi, I'm trying to decipher now, who was the original driver in the original mm -hmm. robbery case? Was it this person here it was, who was then in the driver's seat? It was reportedly seat? as a male, so uh -huh. um, I think they, they, they they could have switched. They switched initially at the beginning when the pursuit started, and uh -huh. she may have jumped into the back seat um, from the initial point. Uh, that was the radio traffic, so um, he may have been driving the whole time, and she may have been in the back seat with the baby the mm -hmm. whole time. Um, but it was it was the initial suspect, this person that they're taking into custody right now, who ended up being the driver. Um, initially, got into the passenger seat. Uh, when they took off, but somewhere along the line, obviously it looked like they switched. They could have switched at the end here too. Yeah. Uh, what city did we end up in here? The Culver City area, is that right? It's kind of the edge of Culver City, okay. Baldwin Hills kind of area. Well, that, that suspect is now officially in custody. Obviously guns are still drawn because they need to check the vehicle. They won't give this a code four, which is uh, law enforcement speak for the, the scene is now clear. They won't do that until they actually check the vehicle down below. They'll open the trunk. And those are all those are all still sheriff's deputies. So mm -hmm. they've been involved in this pursuit for uh, at least 45 minutes from the beginning when it started in the Marina del Rey area, and they stuck with it. And you know they didn't they didn't they didn't let it go. They didn't give it up to any other agency. Um, thankfully, this ended. It seems uh, they have reason and, and to believe that there's, there's, there's the vehicle is still a danger. Is there somebody else inside, perhaps? Well, they're still they're, they're starting to make their approach right now, so they're going to move up and clear the cars because the, all those windows were tinted, so darkly tinted. So they're starting to make their approach right now, and they're going to get in there, clear the vehicle. Yeah, so I'm checking so, that back seat, pop the trunk. Jim, yeah, do we bring Jim in? Jim, from their stance, it looks like they're yeah.
they're, they're clearing it well. Jim, this was your agency that you spent decades at, the LA County Sheriff's Department. As we're watching the scene play out with what looks like to be a family or people who I said definitely seem to care very much about each other. Uh, you're watching that there, uh, Jim, with the man embracing the woman and the child. It is heartbreaking to see a child caught up in this and to see uh, guns drawn and, and, and but you can now understand why there was a delay in this coming to a conclusion Jim talk about that as you saw your law enforcement officers at work there yes and, and you bring up a great point because it does make you realize that crime impacts families both the people that were uh, allegedly victimized in this case but then in, oft, oftentimes people involved as well mm -hmm. and so i think the hope that you would see would be that we have real rehabilitative services if, if the crime was not too serious uh, depending on the nature but you know the bottom line is lives were endangered when there was this dangerous pursuit it makes sense now why uh, the sheriff's department did not conduct a pit, pit maneuver knowing maybe they had information that there was a family a child inside and so uh but yet they held on to the pursuit so uh that Jim, that makes a lot of sense let me just ask you quickly before we wrap this up the baby you see the this female deputy there um you know caring for the baby what happens to the child now well i think they're going to have to diagnose what's going on is the child safe to return to that same family was the other uh, occupant of the vehicle a participant of this crime uh, it's not safe to have a child involved in criminal activity in any way shape or form obviously so did this person knowingly um, do this that that's in in the custody of the child uh, so we don't have a lot of information but i'm certain that that's what detectives will look at and we always want to, in the law enforcement community, uh, strengthen families and make sure that everyone can grow from a situation, not minimizing also the harm to uh, any potential victims and, of this as well. We don't know if the woman was a, a victim herself or being forced to comply with that pursuit. Uh, but it is a heartbreaking moment right there, and, and God bless that deputy for mm -hmm. the loving care there as we see this pursuit come to a close. Marla, I'm going to step down and let you finish your 6 p.m. show. Okay, well, let's thank Jim Helmold. Uh, thank you, Jim, so much for joining our coverage. Of course, Kevin Takumi, we always appreciate you jumping on. And uh, this is coming to a conclusion with hopefully no injuries to speak of, and hopefully that baby gets um, the loving care to Christine's point that she deserves and gets reunited with her family as soon as possible or somebody who will take good care of her.